Hey guys, it's Miss Chang here. So we're going to be looking at section 1.3 and this one is specifically about piecewise function because you're going to see several practice problems using piecewise function. And just like the name of it, piecewise function are basically is a function made up of two or more equations. So it's like the Frankenstein of equations where you're piecing together different equations to make one new equation. And to determine how like which equation to use within the piecewise function, it's determined by your input, or in other words, your x values. So whatever your x value is determines which equation to use. So you can't use all the equation at once. So um, here you can see we have a piecewise function and it has one, two, three, three equations. And I'm going to label them with different colors to help you recognize which equation I'm referring to uh, when I'm drawing them on the graph. So it says here to make a table and then graph, and it's really helpful to make a table. You don't have to make a table when you're making a piecewise function graph, but it definitely helps me out. So when you make a table, typically you have your x and your y values. So we're going to keep that traditionally the same. And because we have three equations, I'm going to section this out into three kind of uh, three rows. So this row here will represent the first equation that is in pink. And so this side here is your equation. And this side here is your x values that you're allowed to use. So keep that in mind. So the right side here is your x values. That means the other side, when you plug in x, you get your y value. So if I want my x value that goes here, I need to start looking on this side first. So the first equation says x is less than or equal to 0. Well, so I know x can be 0, right? And if I were to choose an x that is smaller than 0, just pick any number. I'm just going to make it easy for me and just pick negative 1. Negative 1 is less than 0. And so once I choose my number, you are going to be strategic. And um, what I do is like to write a symbol here to represent these numbers when I translate this to the graph. So you'll see what I mean when I actually draw it. So notice how this 0 here has a equal sign underneath. So that means I'm going to use a solid dot. Anytime you have these types of inequalities, we use a solid dot. Anytime you have these open without the equal sign, you use an open circle. Now, here's the thing. You're going to point in the direction that the number you chose. Because here's the thing. You could have chose negative 100 for all we know, right? So this could have went further down. So I'm going to use an arrow pointing in the direction that I chose. Or the, the number that I chose. So once you have your um, x values here, we're going to plug in this number into the equation to get our y. So you're only plugging these two numbers into the first equation. So 0 plug into x plus 3 is 3. Um, negative 1 plus 3, so I'm plugging in the negative 1 into this equation now, is going to be 2. So these here are, actually let me not box that in. So that means that these are my coordinates. So I have it at 0, 3, 0, 3, and then I have it at negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2. And so what that looks like when I graph it, when I go to 0, 3, so 0 is here, up 3, and I plot, notice that at 0, 3, I have a closed circle, so I need a closed circle there. The next coordinate is at negative 1, 2. So at negative 1, 2, I have an arrow. So I'm going to just plot a little dot here and then connect the dots and then I need an arrow. You can also extend this further down if you wanted to, but uh, it's not necessary. It just depends on what number you chose. So I just chose it at negative 1, so that's why my arrow is a little bit short. So that means that this could keep going further down and you could extend this. All right, let's do the second equation. So the second equation, they gave us two x values, which is nice. So we're going to need to take the 2 and the 0. So when you take these two numbers, notice the inequality. For the 0, there is no line here. So that needs an open circle. For the 2, there is a line. So you need a closed circle. And then again, you're going to connect the dots. So to graph them, you need the y coordinate. So again, we're going to plug in 0 into the second equation. But hang on, this second equation doesn't have an x to plug in. It's just 3. So that makes our lives a lot easier. That means whatever number you plug in, it's always going to be a 3. This is a constant equation, meaning it will only spit out one number, which is 3. 
So both of these y values are always going to be 3. So that means we have 0, 3 and 2, 3. So if I go to 0, 3, that's right here. And I'm going to be drawing a closed circle. Uh, or sorry, not an op a closed circle, an open circle. Um, since that was an open circle right there. So I have an open circle right here. Oops, sorry, I think I erased it. And then this one here is 2, 3. So 2 up 3 is right here and needs a solid circle or a solid dot. And then we're just going to connect the lines. And there we go. So we have two equations now on our graph. We need the third equation that I have in blue. And so this says that x starts at 2. And then it needs an x value that is greater than 2. So think of a number that's bigger than 2. I'm just going to keep it easy and make 3. 3 is bigger than 2. Now for this 2, it has no equal sign underneath. So it needs an open circle. And because you chose this 3, you, you chose the number that's bigger than two, 2 to be 3, you need to point in that direction. So we're going to use a downwards arrow. Because you could have chose a bigger number. You could have chose like a um, 100 for your number that's bigger than 2. So you want to use an arrow to show that it can keep going on and on. So when you plug in 2 into your equation, you have to plug into the third one. So that's going to be like 2 times 2 minus 1. So 2 plug in 2 minus 1. That would be 4 minus 1, which is 3. If you were to plug the second number, 3, into that, that would be 2 times 3 minus 1. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5. All right, so now we have our coordinate, which is 2, 3, and 3, 5. So for 2, 3, that would be up here with an open circle. Probably it's because an open circle because the green was already there to make it a closed circle. And then this is 3, 5. So 3 here, 5 being up here. And I need to connect the dots so I can draw an arrow towards that uh, 3, 5 because I have an arrow on the 3. So I need to draw an arrow at the end. All right, so now we have our graph. So we have completed, um, we have made the table, done the graph, and we need now to state the domain and the um, range, right? So in this case here, um, to state the domain, domain is referring to the x value. So let's write the domain down. So taking a look at this here, if you look at how this graph is shaped, this is pointing down, but it's also pointing to the right with an arrow. So that means it's going to keep extending forever and ever. So is this side. This is going to be extending up, but it's extending to the right. So it's extending forever and ever. So for the x values, it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we can say all real numbers because it covers all spectrums. Um, and I don't see any open circle that doesn't have a closed circle with it. Um, so in this case, they, this is a continuous graph, meaning there's not really any holes here. Now for the range, let's take a look at the range. So the range is referring to the y values. So I noticed that this is pointing down, right, with an arrow. So it's going to go to negative infinity. And it is also pointing upwards with an arrow, so it's going to go to positive infinity. So in, in this case, the range is also all real numbers. So there we have it. We have our domain and range and our graph for this um, problem. So hopefully this gives you an idea on how to do piecewise functions. Make sure to um, ask questions because uh, I know this concept can be quite a lot making the graphs. Uh, so feel free to check out the bonus homework problems or to ask questions in class. Bye guys.